What's up everybody? Now one of the things that I have been asked to do over and over again, and I, I can't even tell you how many times on Twitter that people have asked, hey, I want to build my own PC, but I, I have a hard time choosing like what the right parts are. Well, I'm here to help you out. And the other thing too is I'm going to have like a series of these videos to kind of help you navigate uh, the right parts, tell you why I chose those parts, and at the same time kind of give you some different price points. Now, one of the things I promise you is that I'll be doing one of these videos um, every uh, three months. So we'll be updating this every three months. And we'll be doing it at the 1K price point, the 2K price point, and then what I call the ultra K price point. It's like, it's basically what's your ultimate PC. Above 2K, you start to kind of get up there. This particular video is about the $1,000 price point. About a gaming PC or streaming, it's gaming or streaming, it can be used for either. Um, for around $1,000. And I want to kind of walk through this and tell you why I chose the parts, why I didn't choose other parts, and then at the same time, you can just go in the link in the description below, just go ahead and hit everything, add it to cart, and then boom, it'll be right there. Now these, these individual links will always be updated. Every three months I will update them because as new tech comes out, obviously as new deals come out, I will be continually upgrading them. So you'll be able to see, go back to either this video or a new video in the future that'll be uh, basically labeled for mid 2020 into 2020, et cetera, to always know what the best things to do for your $1,000. So let's get started. Now, at the brain of this whole thing, it, and starting at the beginning for about 194 bucks, and this whole build all in is 973.82 when you are said and done. As of the day of the recording of this build on Newegg.com, it's 973.82. Now, um, I'm just putting Newegg, right? Because one of the things that other people would ask is like, hey, I just want to go up there. I just want to hit add to cart. So I made it a wish list. This isn't a PC part picker thing. This is just a wish list. So you can just go in there, hit add all to cart, and all of these pieces do come together. In fact, some people on Twitter have actually already been building these builds. So where do we start? I'm starting on the Ryzen 5 3600, six core, uh, 3.6 gigahertz, six core, 12 thread CPU. Now you might be asking why Ryzen and not Intel? Well, it's actually quite simple. Honestly, right now Ryzen is more future proof. Why is it future proof? Well, it's, it's quite simply, it's PCIe Gen 4. Now, PCIe Gen 4 outside of M.2 SSD drives hasn't really been anything spectacular. Now, AMD is releasing PCIe Gen 4 graphics cards, um, but they aren't really taking advantage of those speeds. Point is, is that right now, Intel, even with this last gen and the new gen that's coming out, doesn't even support PCIe Gen 4. In fact, the 10900 series that's supposed to come out is still supposed to be PCIe Gen 3. So when I specifically chose the platform, I wanted to make sure that whatever we got for $1,000 was easily upgradable. So should you go one year, two years down the line and you wanted to upgrade this, AMD does a really good job of making sure that their stuff is actually upgradable because they always seem to use the same stuff, whether it's X570, X670, um, their, their uh, CPUs are actually backwards compatible. So I wanted to make sure that that was good. So that's why I chose 3600 and 3600, not X, but the 3600, most people I'm thinking, if you're gonna start with a newer PC, then you want, you're probably not gonna overclock. So so again, 3600, and we wanted to keep the price low. So the 3600X is at the core of this. That's why I chose the CPU. For motherboard, um, I chose the Asus Prime X570, couple reasons. I chose Asus because I really trust their brand. Um, really good price at $149.99 at the time of recording. Uh, it's got two PCIe Gen 4, um, basically M.2 slots. The one thing it does not have, um, and this is important, is it does not have USB-C. Even though the case I chose has USB-C, it's the one thing that's missing. I know a lot of people like having it. Most people actually don't. Most people don't actually use it. So if you wanted to go a little bit more and find something that's PCIe, uh, sorry, find something that actually has USB-C, you can do that. I just, I wanted to make sure I chose a board that I trusted. It's X570, which means you got PCIe Gen 4 support. Um, another reason why we wanted to make sure we're upgradable. For case, I chose the NZXT H510. This is a compact ATX motherboard, uh, mid-tower PC. Uh, it's got front IO, which includes USB-C. Again, wanted to make sure it's upgradable. Um, and if you cared, it was still there. Um, it's NZXT cases are just a lot of fun to build with. It's very easy, um, and it was just right around the same price. I wanted, I built in a lot of NZXT cases in terms of it's kind of got that nice mix of both cost effectiveness and at the same time a little bit premium. It has a tendency to look good, so you don't feel like it's cheap just because it's in an expensive case. Pretty big fan. For CPU cooler, I went with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Again, very minimal on RGB here. Uh, in fact, I think the only thing that actually has any lighting at all is actually in the motherboard. Uh, I know there are a lot of, a lot of choices when it comes to 
um, basically coolers. I wanted to make sure that it's something that I'd use. I've actually used Cooler Master um, air coolers. This is a 120 millimeter um, CPU cooler. Uh, it's always worked well enough for me. The 3600 isn't gonna have a large, a large amount of heat, so this is a bit of an overkill, and it's coming in right at 40 bucks. Um, unlike the 3600X, the 3600 does not come with a cooler. If you wanted to spend a little bit more and get a 3600X, that would come with a cooler, and you could actually cut that out, and that might save you a little bit of money. Graphics card. This was a hard one. When I did under $1,000 for me, I really wanted to make sure that I had, I was trying very hard to put RTX in there. Um, what I ended up choosing is the Zotac Gaming GeForce GTX 1660, uh, six gigabyte GDDR5. Why did I choose the 1660? Because all of AMD's offerings, actually at the time of recording, had not performed as well as the 1660. In terms of bang for buck for performance, right now Team Green's 1660 is by far the best. Coming in at $209, this is about the best card in terms of price performance that you can get at this point. It's NVIDIA, which means a, a lot of times, I know AMD has been doing a lot of work in terms of trying to improve uh, their, their graphic drivers, but right now NVIDIA is just kind of the king. They update their graphic drivers a whole lot more. There's been far less issues. And really on a lot of people are optimizing for NVIDIA, which means in terms of your ability to play at 1080p, which is really what this PC is made for, you're gonna get the most out of this. So um, that's why I chose that. G Skill, uh, G Skill RAM. Why did I choose this RAM? This is G Skill Ripsaw Series 16 gigs um, at 3600. And some people are like, 3600? Honestly, guys, again, ideal performance. 16 gigs at 3600, uh, 3600 performance, uh, 3600 megahertz speed for $80. I mean, honestly, you're gonna get the most in terms of the RAM compatibility. It's G-Skill, which means it's really good. Um, you just really can't go wrong, right? And uh, so a reputable brand, uh, great performance, and ideal for the uh, CPU. And again, if you upgrade, throwing another 36, throwing another 16 gigs or even 32 gigs with, um, this, particular, uh, with this particular lineup is not gonna basically steer you wrong. I also did two by eight configuration, so if you wanted to throw in another 16 gigs, uh, you're gonna be in great shape. I wanted to say minimum 16. Honestly, 16 makes a big difference, which is why I chose 16. Finally, uh, SSD. Um, I did, went with the Western Digital Blue 3D NAND one terabyte. This is a 500 gigabyte, but the one terabyte. Western Digital Blue is just a great brand, kind of like Samsung. Uh, the one thing about these is they have a tendency to be less expensive. You're, you, again, you're just getting a great brand for a great price. At the time of recording, this was basically $99, which is an awesome deal for basically a uh, blue uh, M.2 NVMe drive from Western Digital. I, there's not a whole lot more I can say outside of this. When I choose these, when I chose M.2s, I only had specific brands that I was willing to look at. Western Digital, uh, Seagate, Corsair, or Samsung. Um, I, I haven't played with a lot of the other ones, but I all, or Intel, sorry, Intel was the last one. I just wanna make sure that you got a good price and you had a great drive. And again, one terabyte was more than enough space. Ideally, this is my ideal thing, if you were gonna talk a little bit of upgrades, I would go with a 500 gig and a one terabyte gig, fill up both of those slots, putting your OS just on your 500 gig and then having games or whatever on your second drive. But if you had to just do one, doing a single one terabyte gives you 500 gigs for storage and you know about you have about 200 gigs. That's basically your OS and file system stuff. It's okay, not ideal, but great in terms of the $1,000 price point. Power supply. I did the Corsair RMX Series RM750X. This is a 750 watt, 80 plus gold certified. I wasn't gonna go anything beyond below gold. The other thing too is I wasn't willing to go below 750 watts. And the reason you ask is like, well, I know there's other people who make 750 watts. This specific power supply makes sure that you have more than a single CPU connector for your motherboard. So should you upgrade your motherboard and need something that actually needs more than a single connector, you have that option with this power supply. 750 watts is gonna let you go all the way up to an RTX 2080 Ti, more than likely with anything with the 3000 series that's coming out from Nvidia next year, or should you choose a new Navi GPU from AMD, this will have more than enough power. Usually when you start getting below that, you start to lose things like CPU connectors and you can have pot potential issues when you add RGB or you wanna basically do any custom liquid water cooling. This basically gives you um, the upgrade ability to do all of those sort of things. So that's it guys. That's $1,000 coming in at 973.82. If you live in Oregon or Minnesota, that's your price. If you have tax, I'm sorry, and shipping. But again, really kind of getting to the core of why I did this. 
One, these are all brands I've used. Two, I have built this particular PC and I know all these parts go together very well. This is a very easy PC to put together. There's no RGB, it's super simple. The case comes with fans and all you have to do is basically plug in your cooler. So it's a very simple build. The last thing is with this thousand dollars, you literally have a thousand dollar uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A thousand dollar foundation. This is a very upgradable PC. You have plenty of options in terms of the case, in terms of growing. Uh, you've got plenty of options in terms of um, using that motherboard moving forward, either upgrading the CPU, either upgrading the RAM, or upgrading the uh, upgrading to uh, another PCIe Gen 4, so you're not limited by any of that stuff. And then the last thing too, it's, it's nice and inexpensive, but it's nice and inexpensive with reputable brands. So guys, I hope you enjoy this content. Um, make sure that you come and check out our other very similar videos on this we have one for two thousand dollars and we have another one that's going to be basically the ultimate versions of these games uh ultimate version of these pcs these will be updated every three months make sure you check the link in the description below for the link to basically pick up those pcs uh make sure that you slap that subscribe button whip that i don't know you do something you subscribe like and ring that notification bell. And also make sure that you check out, and if you wanna know how to build a PC, check out our weekly live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. over at mixer.com slash roby one Kenobi. That's where we'll show you how to build the PCs live, or just stay, make sure you stay tuned here. We'll have some PC builds obviously here uh, on the channel as well. Guys, I hope you had a great time. Now hopefully go build a PC and make sure you follow me over on Twitter and on Instagram at Roby one Kenobi and let me know when you actually build it. Make sure you share it with us. I'd love to basically put it up for you. Anyway, guys, we'll see you later. Bye. Hashtag beefy